So here's some things I've been meditating on of late. It's just something that I've been thinking about is questions. And the question I have is, I've been watching Judaism for years, just studying it from the side, not to say that I've ever taken like a serious class in it or anything. Um, And then I've listened to a lot of converts from Judaism into Christianity who are very Jewish and have not lost their Jewishness. They still practice all of the festivals and the feast, Um, something that the Gentiles have a harder time kind of participating in because we get a bit puffed up and proud about it. So if we do it, we kind of have to be checking our heart via the Holy Spirit to see why we're doing it. Are we doing it to be seen? Are we doing it to be righteous? Are we doing it to appear more holy? So it's really a Holy Spirit check. Um, And we have to also make sure it's a coordinating with the original Judaism, uh, not the rabbinic Judaism, uh, which I believe is some other book, maybe a commentary of some kind. If you have a good thing, if you have a pearl, if you have something precious, the truth, why wouldn't you share it? I mean, why would you say that it's only for those born into it? I mean, that would mean that you would be born into going to heaven, whereas anybody else who might see it's a good thing. And I mean, we we see the Jewish converts. We see Ruth. We see Jethro. We see all kinds of people throughout the Old Testament that have gone from you know, uh, uh, Rahab went from not being Jewish, uh, Caleb, Caleb, not being Jewish Gentile, I suppose, into being Jewish as a convert, but not a Jew so much. Um, So the, the Old Testament makes it very clear that God does allow for the Gentile to come in. And if God can pull water from a rock, and if he can part a sea, why couldn't he make the unclean clean? And that's what the cleaning of the inside of the cup is. It's the Holy Spirit working within us, telling us, showing us, guiding us into ways of righteousness. And it's taking the Old Testament traditions, and instead of it being just a kind of like, you step this way and you step that way, it's like, okay, but what is the condition and heart posture of your heart? What is your heart posture when you do this? Just like I just explained with why we want to celebrate the same way Jewish people do, but we kind of, as Gentiles, have a harder time because we like to run with it and we like to be proud and be boastful. So we always have to check our heart and say, okay, are we doing this to be seen? Are we doing this for the right reasons? Are we just trying to be righteous and holy and trying to be puffed up? And are we going to run around as like a zealot and tell people you have to do this? And, be, you know, Judaism being hard doesn't justify not telling people about it. I mean, if you come into Christianity, it's like, welcome to the really good chance of becoming a martyr at some point, at some point in the future. And um, and if you're not a martyr physically, you are going to be just with the things you have to give up in life. You can't have the the love of life, the passion for life itself. It has to be kind of like... Um, you can't chase life this, with both hands the same way other people can. Like, they're going for the wins here. And sometimes for those of us who are in, in Christ, we're taking the loss because we understand if we get too passionate, too preoccupied in things, money, people, it will lead us astray. So it's a really difficult line to walk. It's very hard. Uh, so I don't understand why that's a good excuse, why somebody who's Jewish wouldn't pull in Judaism. I, I think that might be... Um, or pull in uh, Jewish converts is what I mean to say, not Judaism. I know they're Jewish. But anyway, um, I think this might be like a rabbinic, like Judaism thing where some sage somewhere might have said, oh, we're not going to pull in converts. Very interesting. And, you know, and then there's a very funny thing about bloodlines, too. Like people really want you to be Jewish, a Jew who's Jewish. Um, but like, I think from the mother side or something, but it really isolates, you know, it's like, so does that mean everybody else is kind of damned? Does that mean everybody else is going to hell? That nobody else is getting the opportunity to know God? What about Nineveh? Don't you think that's why Jonah ran from Nineveh, from the opportunity, you know, the task of going to tell Nineveh the truth? Because God says, you know, if you don't tell people to repent, then the blood is on your hands. So, he, he didn't want to tell Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed. He went in there, said five words, and left because he didn't want to do it. He had to actually be swallowed by a whale before he actually went into this place and did what he was told. And he still sat up on a hill and was like, I can't wait for this place to be destroyed. And it never got destroyed. And he got really upset about it. 
because they're not Jews. That's why. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is, what is the heart of God? Is the heart of God, you have to be born into this. This is kind of a Christian concept as well. We talk about a pre destination when somebody's predestined to be in Christ or outside of Christ I think there's a fine in between where God lays out a map and you can go this way that way and I really believe in my personal life I can see that God has always put the lighter more beautiful side of the fork in the road to be the where he wants me to go and sometimes if it's dark, it's like, you're going to walk this. I'm going to walk it with you. This is going to strengthen you. This is going to make you bolder. You're going to come out of this stronger than you were before. Uh, it's not a voice. It's something else in your spirit that is guiding you. And all of a sudden, Bible verses will come to you. And all of a sudden, visions of what, you know, certain characters in the Bible will appear. Um, and then you'll start realizing, oh, this is the Bible is being used to speak to me as to what I should be doing in this situation. Um, sometimes it's like, king david and it's like a really good part of him it's like oh yeah this means you know in a, in a heart like you'll see king david in a heart it's like oh god's telling you you're like king david you're 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 a person after god's own heart and then sometimes it's like king david Bathsheba, god's telling you you're kind of lustful <laughs> so it's something like that it's not a voice uh, and i think i can make I, i've made that pretty clear in my videos that clearly I'm spoken to more in a visual sense and music will also help. I'll sit and I'll listen to music and all of a sudden just stuff will happen and I will decide to put it where other people can see it, which I, I'm very grateful to be living the time that I'm living, living in. But this is a complicated thing because it makes me feel kind of sad. It's like, so, I mean, I, I see the Jewish people sharing their tr traditions and cultures on my TikTok. They really enjoy sharing it. And it's, interesting because I don't think they're sharing it to convert. I'm sure they're not. And I listened to Elon too, kind of had me thinking about this as well. It's not like you would take these three or four year classes for the Catholics. It's like this. I think it's a year long. But for Judaism, it's a little more complicated. And I don't really think you're even accepted at that point either. It's like you are born into it or you're not. But is that truly the, a a true reflection of God's heart. And this is also a conversation that happened between Paul and uh, Peter. This is why people are very anti-Paul, because he kind of stepped in and said that God can call and make what is unclean clean. So if he, God calls it clean, then it is. And how does that happen? What is the process of that? It's just like the mitzvahs. You go out and you dip a pot and water and then it's clean you know I think like three or four times or something and it's called clean well if you can do that with a mitzvah why couldn't God do that and what would you have to be dipped in and what would the repentance be and what would it look like and would there be a old testament foreshadowing that would show us the visions the the, the truth of what it is to be and I mean I think the God of Israel is worth converting people to and I'm not saying people should, should become Jewish. It's abundantly clear that people should become Christian. But why wouldn't you? If you have the God of Israel, why wouldn't you want to share it? And I believe we do, in my opinion, have the God of Israel through Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the Messiah. So I'm just looking around. And uh, one time I was on, uh, I was teaching, I, I teach ESL. And one time a Muslim converted, tried to convert me to to a uh, to his Muslim faith. And I was actually quite impressed. And it, it actually struck me in a, like a deep way. He, you know, he's trying to convince, to convince me to be Muslim. And it really made me feel like happy. Like you believe in something so deeply that you're willing to pull people into what you're doing. And you're saying, I want your soul to be saved. Now, I don't agree with the Muslim faith clearly, but it meant something to me that somebody would reach out and try to touch somebody else's soul in such a way in which they've been affected. And um, so that that affected me. So why isn't that the case for Judaism? I, I, have, I have a firm belief it was some commentary thing that somebody made a decision not to convert people, but I don't know. It's my opinion that it's it's not, a, am I, this is just me, but it doesn't seem like a true reflection of God of Israel in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. I know it's a different area for people, but the Old Testament, he did convert people. And he, uh, the God of Israel, wanted people to know who he was, wanted to know his heart. 
wanted us to know his ways. So this is um, Linda of Christ's King Forever. May God be with you. And this is just a question.